Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog and welcome to Black Friday. That's right, BHB Reptiles has a Black Friday sale today. If you guys are interested in any animals, go to bhbreptiles.com. Everything is on sale, enough about that. Let's talk about Ivy. Obviously yesterday, success, right? She finally ate a turkey. It took us three years to find a snake to eat a turkey for Thanksgiving. Everyone got a feast yesterday, but she is looking big and I have documented plenty that when you feed Ivy a big meal, what happens? She does these urates and kind of pees a ton, way more than any other snake. So I'm not gonna lie to you, her water's a little bit nasty. I think it's gonna be cleaning every single day for the next probably seven to 10 days. So I am gonna start my day by cleaning Ivy's enclosure. all cleaned up just gonna fill her up uh, I promise you it won't last 24 hours before I'm back in there again but I don't mind it I love starting my day working with Ivy and all my animals for that matter so we're gonna have a good day together let's push our problems aside and let's rock this day out it has been a minute since I've showed you chopsticks the two-headed red eared slider they are getting very big I mean I tell you what they have definitely double or triple their size they're gonna be over here at the Reptarium soon I keep saying that I'm getting an exhibit for them but it's just been so busy here with so many projects it is gonna be be absolutely within the next month or so we'll have these guys on display it's gonna be cool to have both the two-headed snake with Ben and Jerry and chopsticks over here but I wanted to update you guys because again they are absolutely thriving right now getting huge and they they don't look like baby turtles anymore and this is about the size that I felt comfortable bringing it over to the reptarium smaller than this I'll be honest with you I was just a little bit too nervous we know that I've had some problems with two-headed turtles in the past I wanted to get these guys really established over at BHB where there was no commotion no problems anything like that now that they're this size I feel very confident that they don't have that stress level they have as babies and they are just doing so so well how cute are those things can you imagine I mean, to it Two-headed animals are so bizarre. Again, it's called polycephaly, just meaning two heads or multiple heads, right? In this case, too, absolutely incredible. I can't wait to see the kids' reactions when they see these little monkeys swimming around. They're gonna absolutely love it. Day two of python breeding, or I should say ball python breeding. So we have to get all the males and females switched up today, see what else is breeding. It's always exciting. I mean, I tell you what, this is a really good start. We had a ton of males breeding yesterday. Probably the best first day of breeding I can ever remember. Now that we have all the ball pythons together, we have to get the children's, the Stimson's, the Spotted's, and Sabu's breeding too. So we want to get all of the pythons breeding, all the boas that do breed, things like rainbow boas and sand boas, we typically breed like maybe March or April, but right now we've got to get the rest of the pythons together. So uh, uh, I've got my males up here, got all my female groups, and basically what I do, just to keep it really simple, is I'll take a silver paint marker and mark the males. That way when they go from this cage to this cage, and I have to just check, you know, the male and females look so similar. I I know the one with the paint marker is the male. He can go to the next cage and the next cage and the next cage. So uh, pretty easy, simple system. Again, I keep talking about organization, simplicity. The more dumb proof you make it, the better your success is gonna be. So let's just go ahead, mark up the males and get them in with females for the first time. Hey 
Matilda. How you doing, girl? You, she is so like, every time she sees us now, she's like, take me out, take me out. So obviously I am working on the door. Now, a lot of times you guys think that I should just be able to do things like oh, on a whim, but there's a lot of planning that goes into everything. So let me start to tell you what my thoughts are. Because listen, by cutting this out and making this into a door, the hinges are going to have a lot of weight on them, right? Because this door is kind of heavy. So I have to kind of think of how do I do things? So I've, I've been thinking about it. I've been using my brain. First off, I've got this concrete masonry saw so that I can cut this and I cut this on the circular saw. Then I'm gonna take and cut this down here and I'm gonna cut this down here. I'm gonna make a template so that the actual floor is the same way and then I can cut a board. I'll show you that. I'll probably do this tomorrow to be honest with you. I just wanted to go over what I was thinking but the biggest thing is how is this door gonna swing, right? If we have hinges over here, there's a lot of weight. It's gonna drag, it's gonna be issue. So I was thinking about it and these are actually ball bearing rollers, right? So I can put this on the bottom here where you won't really see it and the whole door will actually just be rolling on this. So I've got a bigger one and I'm hoping that actually the smaller one works better to be honest with you because it's going to be a lot tighter. So I'll put like five or six of these ball bearings on the bottom of a piece of wood that's attached to this and then I can have a latch here, hinges back here and this door will swing open and Matilda, like you can see, she wants to come out constantly. She could just come out. We can come in the morning, open the door, come out, she can go back all she wants because now the problem is, is that she sees so she says, lift me up and let me out there. But then we have to lift her up to put her back too. If she can make her own decisions about coming and going, it's gonna be way better. So uh, I think I'm gonna start this project tomorrow. As promised, we are gonna start to look at salt and peppers enclosure. So basically the only thing I can do without like tearing the entire thing down, which I don't wanna do, is I'm gonna have to cut this down here just with this knife, make a little bit of a flap right here, drill a hole through it right here. And then I ended up getting this camera right here that is actually pretty cool. It's, uh, it's got a little camera on the end of this, I can push this through the hole and I can actually look around and see where I can hopefully find a leak, where it is actually leaking, and that'll trace it back. We know it's the waterfall, but we don't know where it's leaking from the waterfall. So if we find out where it's leaking, we can save ourselves a lot of energy of just like kind of continuously, you know, shooting for the dark, right? So hopefully uh, this will go well. Uh, it shouldn't uh, mess with the integrity of the structure at all by drilling a hole in this right here. There's still plenty of kind of support there, so shouldn't be a problem. So hopefully, if I'm lucky, I won't have to do any massive deconstruction of this enclosure and I can just find out where that leak is. So first thing, cut this. Second thing, drill a hole. Third thing, stick this camera through and hopefully we'll start to find out what the heck is going on. So that was a bear. We finally got through. I don't like the fact that all this wood is wet down here, telling me that this is definitely getting sopped. But uh, overall, the, the, the actual integrity doesn't look too bad. But I literally burnt out one drill, had to get the heavy hogger over here. We finally got the hole drilled. Now we can actually put the camera through and see what we can see inside and see where this water is coming from. But like I said, the water damage to this is much worse than I expected it to be. So we'll have to see once we get this completely dried out, if that dries out or if we're gonna have to lift this up and replace that board. That would be a nightmare. But uh, at least now we got the hole drilled, which was 10 times harder than I expected it to be. See if I can't see inside here. Right now I don't see anything at all. I might have to actually shine a light in here as well and hopefully see this camera because right now all I see is darkness in here. The camera doesn't really help to be honest with you but I can actually see through and I can really see exactly where it's leaking which is on the very back side of the waterfall which is really interesting. So basically what you have is right where the waterfall is coming down that back side there is definitely where the water is getting somehow down and actually leaking don't know exactly how that's going on but uh at least now we definitely know that it is the back side nothing up front is leaking at all it is the back side so 
All right, I think next bet, I, I tell you what, it didn't really help us that much to drill that hole, other than we did see exactly where the, the leak is. Uh, gonna have to shut the waterfall down and just start sealing every single thing up in just hopes that when we turn it back on, it stops because definitely not a good situation at all in there. Well, it's after Thanksgiving, so that can only mean one thing to the Bartrek family, and that is Christmas is here, so we are off to get our first Christmas tree. If anyone's been following, you'll know, I'd say the over-under is about 11 trees this year. Lori loves Christmas. I think she's gonna have at least 11 trees, but we are heading to get our first tree right now. For those of you guys that don't remember, uh, we go to a place called Blake's, which is like an apple orchard, but they also have trees and stuff like that. And, oh, look at Lori. There's a, a statue of you up there. So we always get one big tree for the front of our living room stairway area that's tall because we have a tall ceiling. There goes 20 feet. So uh, yeah, that's a big tree right there. There's a lot of big ones. Last year, we kind of were slim picking. So. I know. Hopefully they have a nice one. Well, let's look. That's a big tree. That, that's too big. No, that's perfect. <laughs> All right, where are we going, Jesus. mister? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bonchak, it seems like you're having a little bit of a problem there. <laughs> it there. would be pretty funny if they were tied. Yeah, right. right. Oh. Oh. Well, it's a dangerous situation. Like, what is <laughs> I'm out of here, y'all. That's a big tree, Nori. That's, pretty. that's gonna. Worry. That's gonna. That tree is gonna go all the way almost to our, our ceiling. It doesn't matter how tall it is. It doesn't. I'm what are you like? Are you it? Clark Griswold? <laughs> Maybe this year. We're gonna have squirrels. We're gonna have squirrels in the tree. We're gonna. <laughs> oh my God! All right, whatever makes make you happy. Up. Last year's was too short. All right, make you happy. Happy wife, happy life. Huh? Yeah, happy life. <laughs> the bottom looks That's, nice. Yeah. The bottom does look nice. You go grab a tag. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be happy. It's gonna be probably tricky to get it in the tree stand. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we got some. Yeah, we get a, We got yeah, these guys with us. I, uh, Mr. I can't, I can't get the tree in the house. <laughs> I cannot. Oh, that's nice. I got two dozen donuts. Woo. One plain, one sugar. Who eats the plain? Yeah, what are you doing, dude? I don't plain. know. Should I got two so touches? Uh, oh, you got, and you got wine. So it's gonna be good. Now let's go see if we can get this uh, 16 foot tree in our house. And in your truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's only an eight foot bed. I'm gonna have an eight foot hanging out on it. We're never making it. <laughs> we're, ne we're not getting home. If anyone's watching this, come pick us up at Blake's with a flatbed. Please, we send help. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As if they couldn't see the 16 foot tree. <laughs> like, here's the target bag. That bag ain't staying on there. Okay. It's staying good. on there. Good job, Lori. Listen, Way to go. the bag will stay on longer than the tree will stay in. This is a nightmare. <laughs> I got All right. the tire let's go home and let's find out how bad this doesn't fit. Okay, now go up. Ugh. All right. Hold on, hold on. Your shoe is here. Yeah. 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 You're no too far away from us. Actually, may I help me pick this up? Good. I got her. This one. 
This one probably will flop because it was out already. Like, you know how the other ones were? Mom. This one was open. Where are you? <laughs> You're behind the fruit. <laughs> it's like we're watching the ceiling. Besides, <laughs> wait for it. Tell me where. Keep going. Hold on, let me see. It looks fine here. It looks good for me. You think it looks good? Yeah. Look at There's a squirrel. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that was in the tree? That's crazy! <laughs> Bob on sucker! Look it. There is literally one inch to spare. We could have got a bigger one. Yeah, we could have. I'm disappointed. Good job. Yeah, yeah dude, job. this is a classy <laughs> tree. Picked a good one. All right. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. Uh, Bar check, Christmas has begun. Down below, let me know how many trees you think Laurel will have at the end of this. Uh, but we have the first bar check Christmas tree. We have to decorate it and get it going. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor, uh, check this playlist out right over there. Click on that for me. Up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. We'll be talking about this Christmas tree. On this side, I hope that you're subscribed to this vlog channel. If not, hit the subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.